by the way, my liver is an equal opportunity employer. So <laughs> I, I actually like, you know, beer, wine and, and liquor. Welcome to Why Am I Talking, a podcast where the guests are so good, you'll wonder why the host is even talking. In each episode, you will hear one of the leaders of the Lehigh Valley's vibrant business hub. They will tell you the keys to their success, the mistakes they've made, and what they have in store for the future. Here is the host of Why Am I Talking from Why Am I Insurance, Jimmy Honachik. All right, that is me. I am Jimmy Honachik. But like that intro says, uh, you're not going to want to listen to me at all in this episode. The guest today is is truly the man when it comes to fine dining, fine drinking, uh, all of these things in the Lehigh Valley. We have the guru, the guy to talk to. Uh, Jay Nee has had a long and incredible career in hospitality, um, and we are so excited to have him here. I'm not going to give away any of uh, his thunder. He's got some awesome things coming. Okay, I'm going to give away one thing. Sorry, Jay. Ginvitational is coming June 4th. This is, and Jay will give you a better idea of what it is, but this is a celebration of gin and liqueur and alcohol, and I like celebrating those things. So without further ado, Jay, I cannot say it enough. Thank you for coming on. I cannot wait to dive into this conversation. Uh, Jimmy, thank you so much for having me. Uh, so excited. And and yeah, uh, Invitational 2 is coming up on June 4th, and uh, we're really excited. It is a celebration of cocktail culture. Uh, it is more than just gin. Uh, just the name just rolled for me, and I love gin, but it is so much more than gin. We have all spirits featured. Uh, great uh, education and seminars. And uh, you were there last year. I'd love to hear your feedback, but really looking forward to year two for sure. So I, I went with a group of, I think, six people. And I cannot tell you how much fun we had. We went for my wife's birthday. I know she likes gin. I, I like gin. It has alcohol in it. So that makes me happy. Um, but I had a great time there. there. There was more than gin, right? Like you said, I could get bourbon and there were all these local vendors, um, so local distilleries, which I thought was really cool. Yeah. Yeah, it was great. Uh, last year was year one, and, and we were actually going up a couple of things. It was, uh, uh, it was a weekend that um, the calendar was very full, and we were committed to doing it and getting it uh, going. Uh, but we went up against Celtic Classic. It was uh, it was wow. cold and rainy. We had the threats of, and it happened to be a Sunday, so we were also up against uh, the Eagles during yes. a really amazing run, right, for their season. <laughs> so we had a couple things going against us, but we ultimately uh, landed on a really successful uh, event. Uh, we had a lot of uh, local vendors. We will have more local vendors, but uh, also a lot more international vendors. Uh, at this point, what we have committed is probably somewhere around 100 to 120 spirits will be making their wow. appearance uh, of all different types. We have tequila, we have rum, we have vodka, we have gin, uh, bourbons, whiskeys, etc. So we're really looking forward to it for sure. I'm I'm surprised to hear you say that about the the competition because it was it was well attended. So you guys did a good job. I, I don't know how, but well done. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, it, you know, for a first year event, uh, it was well attended. We were over 200 people. We're, you know, our goal is, you know, hopefully three to 500 is is kind of the goal. What we want to do is is be large enough so that everybody feels that energy, but we also want to be small enough that uh, people can really have conversations with the makers, the the vendors. Um, you know, they put their lifeblood into these bottles and to have to be able to have a conversation as opposed to just the cattle call of some of these bigger events that are just so big that you don't get to talk about what was their thought with the aromatics that went into a bottle, you know, so uh, it, it should be a really good time. We have fantastic seminars, some of the best local mixologists uh, in the area. You're familiar with a couple of them, I'm sure, um, that, you know, that work through and, and some great restaurants that are providing food as well. So really going to be a great event. You ask more nuanced questions than I do, but I did enjoy that. You could sit there and talk to the vendors and it was the owner or the master distiller 
and they would talk to you sort of about what went into the process and how they did it. Um, I, I didn't use the word aromatics at all, but we, we had really good conversations. Yeah. Why does this taste so good? It could be as simple as that. Why do I love this? I'll tell exactly. you why. Yep. Yep. That's exactly like it. Me. Yep. And, and here's the thing. It's the beauty of it is you can be a novice to somebody that really is experienced. And the idea for us is that we developed it so that the education and what you're tasting will give you tools to elevate your own ability to entertain at home. Right. Like the idea yeah. of of doing, um, you know, some of the seminars that we had last year and we're doing uh, changes, we're doing additional seminars. Um, our, we've expanded our educator team. We're really looking forward to being able to give you kind of the home entertainer or the home kind of like your own mixology, like give you the tools that allow you to kind of experiment freely and know that you're going to end up with some really good product and also showcase your skills with, uh, with friends and, and family that are coming over for entertaining. That's fun. And, and learn the history of some of these classic cocktails and all that. So. Yeah, it's it's funny that you bring that up. One of the things I have written on here to talk to you about is how to make me sound like I know what I'm talking about. So we will get into that later. But right now I want to know, like, what was the genesis behind Jim Invitational? How did you come up with this idea and make it happen? Uh, so uh, I'll, I'll tell you, this has been a long gestating uh, process because uh, the uh, the origins of this came pre-COVID, believe it or not. Wow. Uh, yeah. And it was uh, the original idea was for us to launch in 2020. Um, but obviously, uh, this global pandemic had uh, had uh, its sights on, you know, these big events. Uh, so we ended up having to kind of sit on it for a while. Um, but, you know, in uh, gin is a, um, a spirit that I do love and I and and I know it's not for everybody. So the idea was to take uh, gin and, and give it an opportunity for people to kind of experiment with it. Um, at kind of no risk and to kind of open up their world a little bit. Um, but also knowing that gin isn't for everybody, I wanted to be able to uh, bring craft spirits uh, in general. So brown spirits and rums and, uh, you know, uh, vodka and, and tequila, etc. So uh, recognizing that, you know, what we wanted to really kind of build on was a little bit of an experience where people can be educated, people can try things, uh, learn a little bit about the process and, and hopefully come away with a deeper appreciation for these artisans that are making these spirits. Um, it was in part uh, inspired by uh, very common in uh, in Europe and in the EU, in England especially. Gin culture is a really big deal. They are they have gin festivals monthly, if not weekly. You could probably find one in a countryside. So uh, hey, and sign usually, me up. yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so. Um, and usually really well attended and they all, uh, they're all known for different things. So it was in part inspired by that. Um, but yeah, we, we've always maintained it's, uh, it's gin forward, but not gin exclusive. And you're, you're going to learn a lot to step up the cocktail game for your home and for entertaining and, and just have some fun and, and be out with friends and hopefully create memories. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and you definitely hit on all of that. Um, we, we had a great time and had, Mainly memories. Yeah. Um, but I, I was wondering, was the idea to bring in local distilleries from the start? Um, and sort of how did that happen? That was probably my favorite part was going around being able to see, oh, I, social style. I know you guys and uh, yeah. Christmas spirits. Like just all of that was really cool. Yeah, it was uh, it was a very important part for us. Um, you know, it was something that uh, they were um, with their liquor license. They're actually able as PA producers to also be able to sell and, and a fair number of them sold really well. Um, you know, with, when you have small brands like that, they're, you know, uh, Social Still, for instance, does really well immediately locally a lot of people know them their brand is is great uh eight oaks christmas city spirits there's so many of them that are doing really good stuff um to give them uh to give them um you know uh, a 
a place where they could showcase their brands, uh, again, be able to speak to a public that is really seeking them out, um, not for that cattle call experience, but really trying to uh, get gain some knowledge and gain some insight into what they're doing. Uh, we're really proud to say, I mean, what we I think we had 16, um, 16 uh, PA producers last year. We have I think just about everybody back from that original 16 and we've expanded um, a, as well as having uh, some uh, additional international, uh, national and international producers. So um, it, it clearly speaks to uh, they were happy with kind of a first year turnout and the activity that they were able to speak to people that really cared. Um, and, uh, and, you know, ultimately, uh, they're, they're back for more and, and we're happy to have them back for more. So, yeah, that's great. So what let's, let's back it up. It's, it's so hard. I hate that. I only have 30 minutes, right? Cause I could, <laughs> I could talk gym invitational for the rest of this episode. Yeah. Right. Um, but what, what gives you the authority to host a gym invitational, right? Like what is your background that gives you the, the credentials that could be the person to bring this all together? Sure. Thanks for asking. I, in the last 15 years, I've been uh, I, um, on the kind of the wine and spirit sides of things, uh, largely through sales. I was, uh, you know, worked uh, for the largest distributor in the country. Uh, also worked for one of the largest kind of total alcohol beverage uh, suppliers uh, for a number of those years. Uh, and then uh, uh, 2019, I started my own consultancy uh, to work with uh, on-premise mostly because of my relationships with restaurants. I wanted to be able to kind of consult with the idea of helping them provide better beverage programs. So, you know, there's so many restaurants out there that do a really good cocktail program, but don't necessarily put the same amount of effort into beer or wine and or because of you know, passions or whatever. And, uh, you know, I think by not having that balance, you're potentially alienating somebody that could be walking in and looking to spend money in your restaurant. So uh, the idea of having at least some sense of that same effort to find balance in all three segments of, of their beverage program it will allow a husband and wife or multiple couples come on in and everybody can find something that they enjoy as opposed to, oh, I'll just have, you know, whatever house wine that doesn't excite me or whatever macro beer that doesn't excite me, et cetera, um, and give everybody the, uh, the uh, ability to uh, uh, kind of experience that enjoyment. So that was the, that was the goal. Yeah. Who were you working with on that? Was those local restaurants or those, what was your, your client base there? So my client base was local restaurants, uh, as well as local, uh, PA brands like, you know, brand maker, you know, um, producers as well, working a little bit with them, helping them with, uh, route to route to market questions and stuff. So, um, you know, some of that was just kind of one off consulting with, you know, because I enjoy who they were and, like, you know, my deeper relationships are really more on the restaurant side and have been for that better part of the decade and a half. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, then, uh, given who I have in front of me, I'm going to ask who's doing it right in, or, or talk to me about the, the Lehigh Valley restaurant scene. I mean, yeah. there's so much going on, right? There are so there, many good places. Yeah, there is, and there's. Uh, it's exciting to see. Uh, you know, I've I've lived here for about 16 years, and it's exciting to see what the evolution has been, and and your level of choice, and people stepping up their game. I mean, you you'd be hard pressed to come away like you go to Main Street in Bethlehem, for instance, or you go right downtown in the circle in Easton, for instance, like the, 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 the quality and the density of restaurants and the supportive nature of the restaurant scene, you, you have so much choice between, um, you know, what their concepts are in terms of the, the culinary choices that you have, um, you know, casual, upscale, casual, uh, fast, fast, casual dining all the way to fine dining. You know, I mean, we have multiple 
uh, multiple time beard award nominee and, you know, that, uh, that owns Bolite and, and, uh, and, you know, Mr. Lee's noodles. And, and then you have uh, really great restaurateurs that have multiple units that continue to expand, um, you know, having downtown Bethlehem and having kind of the circle in Easton, you look at that, you put that into larger metropolitan areas and you're like, you really realize uh, what you have here is, is something special. So it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've, I've told this story before, but when we moved to the area, uh, my wife and I said, Allentown, Bethlehem, definitely Easton. Like I grew up around here. I know what Easton's like. We're not going to live in Easton. And then we went shopping, uh, to like Lowe's or something. We were moving, living into the house and I was like, let's just get lunch in Easton, right? Like, let's just, we're here. Let's get lunch downtown Easton. And as soon as I stepped in that circle, I was like, this is way different than I remember. Yeah. And we went to the Bayou and had the greatest lunch I can imagine. And yeah. just my entire view of what the Valley was had changed completely. Yeah, the Bayou boys are doing it really well. They're doing uh, really good casual food. They make fantastic pierogies, by the way. They're awesome. Okay. Uh, and I know good friends of yours, too, you know, Notch and White Orchids. I mean, they're doing fantastic stuff. Great beverage program, really good food, um, you know, and and a, and a touch of uh, additional culinary experiences, you know, mm-hmm. with their Asian Thai cuisine. So fantastic. I mean, there's so many choices out there. And again, kind of that casual to upscale and fine and fine dining is just awesome. It's great to see. So I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a favorite place to get a drink? Oh, um, let's see to get a drink. Oh, it's tough because I, I will, if I'm, if I'm going for beer, um, for beer selection, I actually do really enjoy, uh, Bayou. Um, I'm, I'm, by the way, my liver is an equal opportunity employer. So <laughs> I, I actually like, you know, beer, wine and, and liquor. I, I do really enjoy the Bayou for kind of their tap choices, uh, uh, cocktails, um i it really enjoy notch i think their cocktail program's great um i love uh what mr lee's bolita is doing i i really enjoy um apollo um you know it's it's really it's unfair to name so it name just a handful when so many of them are doing really good things i think the yeah. bookstore bookstore speakeasy is like i mean that was like a real early I mean, they were they were like literally on the national map with the quality of uh, of um, uh, cocktails that are being made. Max, uh, who's the director of beverage there, he's okay. actually one of our educators for Jim Invitational. So we'll get I mean, out. He's get, yeah, he's gonna gonna bring his A game to yeah. They're doing some really good stuff. There's a lot of great stuff that's being produced. So wine yeah. lists. I mean. You got you got Bully, uh the Wilbers doing uh, doing some good stuff on there. Um, you know you have uh, there's some great choices. Um, you know Notch uh, uh, Top Cut has a stellar mm-hmm. wine list. Um, you know there's so there's so much going on. There's so many choices. You could be you could drop so many of these restaurants down into the village or Manhattan or you know wherever. And yeah, you're like, I can't believe this is here in the valley. We're so we're we're so fortunate to have it. So, yeah, it, it, we are, and we're lucky. Um, so th- this makes me think of a segment I wanted to do with you called "What Do I Need with Jay Nee?" And so, if you had to pick your favorite, I don't, a drink X Y Z, what do I need? Ooh, I I um. I will say that from uh, my my go to all uh, all during the summer weather that we're now experiencing, yeah. I, I there's nothing better for me than a classic uh, gin and tonic. Um, now, short of that, I love bright acidity. So give me a gimlet, mm. or give me a, a margarita that has really nice, beautiful, fresh squeezed citrus. I love that. So uh, you get me into the winter and uh, I, I love my Manhattans. I enjoy my old fashions. Uh, but when we're when we have weather break right now, yeah. it's about it's about citrus and about really good quality spirits. So that's exactly what my wife would say. So I guess, like always, she's right. Um, <laughs> the sooner you learn that, my friend. So. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. 
So uh, all of this has sort of led you to where you are now. Um, and you have a new opportunity in front of you, right? You, you've taken a new role and I'd love to hear more about that. Sure. Yeah. I, um, I've actually recently about, uh, about a month and a half ago, um, I took on a role as a, uh, as a national sales director for uh, Mill Press Imports. And Mill Press Imports is one of these uh, amazing hidden gems here in the Lehigh Valley. Um, uh, many of you may know uh, kind of a related company. If you've been down to Main Street uh, in Bethlehem, uh, there's a, a, an amazing olive oil and vinegar tasting room called Seasons. I, uh, and- I love Seasons so much. Yeah. It's the greatest yeah. experience. Like, my wife and I never know what to get people for gifts. And then we went in there and we're like, this is it. This is it. Like you just go here and you've got the greatest gifts. It's amazing. Yeah. The quality of oil is, is second to none, like literally second to none. I mean, we're talking world-class oils and vinegars. Um, So I am in charge of, uh, you know, from the sales direction. So uh, seasons is the retail segment of this family owned business, husband and wife team uh, based here in the Valley. Uh, Soraya um, uh, met uh, her husband, Tim, uh, who is my direct boss uh, during a, a year that she spent uh, as an exchange student at Becca High, um, like going way, way back when. And she's from Spain and uh, her family is multi-generation millers. Uh, They have uh, olive groves and and state-of-the-art mill. Uh, And then, uh, you know, this this, uh, uh, import business feeding the, the retail and then growing we supply more than a third of the of the uh, tasting rooms in the country uh, for olive oil and vinegar, uh, but we're also really um, doing a strong food service, you know, with the focus on quality mm. as opposed to we're not we're not a commodity uh, importer. We are quality, and mm-hmm. um, I- I'll tell you every single time I I meet with somebody and we do a tasting of what we think is maybe a good bottle of oil on a shelf versus what is uh what we're bringing to the table i mean the light bulb goes off with so many people so what we're doing is what i'm really concentrating on is uh working with uh family-owned independent grocers to develop private label for them Mm. uh, to really kind of cut through all the noise of all of these choices out there and stand behind a brand that they can absolutely fall in love with, which is their own name. So, you know, wow. Yeah. That's very great. cool. Yeah, it is fun. And so is it just the oils? Do they do the vinegars as well or just the oils? Yeah. So the oils, we, uh, we produce, uh, some oil and then we also source oils and then we're sourcing vinegars as well. So, uh, the bulk of our oil is, uh, our, uh, I'm sorry, the bulk of our vinegars are actually from Modena. We're doing, you know, the balsamics, uh, we do a full range of balsamics, uh, flavored and and different weights to them uh and then we do i mean we do a champagne vinegar and we do a fantastic cherry vinegars and and wine vinegars uh otherwise uh of uh, you know different flavors and really amazing stuff uh but the oils are the oils are probably two-thirds of our business and okay. and, uh, and the other third goes into vinegar and and we're expanding with kind of pantry options as well we uh we just did our first run of of tomato sauce that uses the olive oils oh, wow. uh and it's it's otherworldly really good so yeah it's fun so it's neat i do i do want to let you know you said it's one third that is your uh your vinegars right now that's going to grow because i have a huge balsamic vinegar addiction Ah. And now that I know that you're there, I will be hitting you guys up more than regularly. That's fantastic. And, you know, we'll we'll do a little aside. I'll get you some other samples. We should have you come on over to the to the uh, uh, to the production facility. The bottom. Oh, that'd facility. be great. I'd love that. Yeah, it'd be awesome. Hey, you know, that's what I love about it. The fact that we're in the Lehigh Valley and and something that is. Uh, this this facility is world class. We have over 40 gold and silver medals in the last four years. Uh, is speaking strictly to quality. So I mean, it it really is mind blowing how we can be a leader in a very niche industry, and here it is, you know, just somewhere in in Bethlehem. You know, it's pretty crazy. 
It is crazy. I mean, you hear about these sorts of enterprises in the Valley yeah. um, that are, are national or international in scale, um, yeah, absolutely. but they got their start here. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's, it's incredible and it's, uh, I, I'm really proud to be a part of it and see, um, you know, my coworkers that are on the production floor and, and the owners are fantastic and the level of appreciation uh that that we're experiencing for you know what we're doing it's it's awesome it's great absolutely yeah. and you're not i mean i think you're an example of this right because you're not a native of the valley you you found your way here and have started a family and a life here right yeah my my wife is originally from here so that's okay. the early ties um uh, i met her in 99 she went to college up north i'm originally from just outside of boston and then we moved down here about 16 years ago to be close to family uh, and started family. And, and, you know, it, ever since 99, I was coming down for music fest and coming down mm -hmm. for the holidays. And I'm like, man, this is amazing what's going on here. And, you know, and at the time she was still of the mindset, like, I don't know that I'm, I'm ready to come back home. And then when we made that decision to come back home, it, you know, we're so glad that we did. I mean, we, we live in Salisbury township. So, you know, the idea of us having two acres in the country and being, seven minutes to downtown Bethlehem is like, whoa, this is incredible. It's such a great city. And then, you know, the Lehigh Valley and being so close to major metropolitan areas that you can do a day trip in. I mean, you could do a day trip in DC. It's a, it, it would be yeah. a long grind, right? But you could do a day trip in DC yeah. and, and it's just easy to do. So I love it. It's, it's fantastic. Yeah, no, it really is. Um, we, we've been very happy as well that we moved here. Uh, there's just so much to do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There is. Yeah. There's never not a time, uh, something to do. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, and their live music. I mean, you think of arts quest, uh, yeah. you know, not just music fest, but the Levitt pavilions, you know, the season that they do there, all of the, all the free music that goes on the, the arts, you know, Allentown art museum is like mm -hmm. there. I mean, that's an incredible little gem and that's like, that's free admission. Now it used to be, yeah. used to be paid admission and that just recently changed. There's so mm -hmm. much going on. It's incredible. Yeah. Uh, we're very lucky. Um, and, and so I, I have to ask, yeah, how, how can you help me seem like I know what I'm talking about? Maybe, especially in the wine department. I okay. like wine. It's yeah. yummy. It's delicious. But yeah. if you use that in front of someone, they, they clearly know you don't know what you're talking about. Do you have any tips for how to sound like I know what I'm talking about? So, all right, here's the deal. Um, first of all, wine is completely subjective. So if you start with something that you like, you can build on it, right? They're really smart from a marketing standpoint to actually give you keywords on the back of a label these days. So if you read a back of a label and it's a wine that you love, you're going to be right there. Um, but I will. I, here's here's one one note that I would give you is if you're thinking about varietals that you enjoy, Pinot Noir. If you have a budget in mind, Pinot Noir is a varietal that I say stretch your budget by 10 or 15 dollars and you will open up a different world so really? if you're if your budget is under 20 dollars, i'm going to encourage you to go to 35 if you can go to 35 you will have a life-changing moment with pinot noir there's so much out there that's available that's inexpensive but by stretching your budget specifically on that varietal it like the world is just it, it changes for you Wow. I, yeah. I love Pinot Noir, but I've, I, I'm a, a frugal person, so I've really never taken it up to the next level. You don't have to kill yourself, and it doesn't yeah. have to be a daily drinker. But if you're doing a fifteen or sixteen dollar Pinot Noir That's and me. you go to twenty five to thirty, yeah, like you're you're going to open up a different world of quality. Absolutely. Thank you. Yes. You're welcome. Yeah, it's a great one. And and here's the thing: at thirty dollars, sometimes that budget just doesn't allow for it to be a daily drinker, and you want a daily drinker. Fine. You know, there's there's good quality box wine out there too, right? And it's like yeah. you know that the glass is going to be consistent from from beginning to end. But what I love about just that particular varietal, especially just by going up that notch, you will see how how much it goes from kind of mass produce to a little bit more of a finite resource and mm -hmm. how that is, is just really, it, it, it opens your eyes. Yeah. 
that's awesome. Thank you, thank you. And with that, you, you used the word notch, so it triggered um, it triggered our sponsor, who is Notch Modern Kitchen, um, and they are incredible. Uh, as you they mentioned, are. they do a lot of awesome things with spirits and mixed drinks. Um, and so we always do a segment for them called Kicking It Up a Notch. And awesome. so I'm going to ask you... How do I kick up my 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 drinking game a notch? If I'm having a mixed drink, what do I do? How do I do it? Okay. The most important thing, get quality mixers. All right. Mm. Now I, I said early on that I love gin and tonics. Here's here's where it's important. Gin and tonic, about three quarters of your cocktail is tonic. You don't want a 69 cent tonic water in there spend two dollars like spend an extra two dollars a four pack to get something like a fever tree or a q or um i think buzzy is a no is a new one out there um spend that extra two dollars for a four pack of that quality when you start getting into craft quality you're going to see uh, the flavor profile is just amazing. So I, I never even thought of it like that. You're right. Most of my drink isn't even the alcohol. So I could buy an expensive liquor and put it in there. But if it's not being mixed with the right ingredients, it's not going to taste through. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, Jay, I, I cannot tell you. Wait, what is that hat you're wearing? Oh, what is this hat I'm wearing? This is yeah. a gym oh. invitational. Very That's, limited edition, my friend. That is awesome. Yeah. I So I, I will close it on that. The Gym Invitational is coming up on June 4th. Um, it is going to be awesome. The last one, like I said, we had such a good time. And we're coming back. Uh, I think we're going to sponsor it this year. We, we cannot um, be more excited. I know my wife is and I am. My friends are. Um, I, I, that's awesome. It's so good to hear. I, um, I will encourage anybody that's watching this uh, it to uh, please go to Steel Stacks on their calendar. They'll have it so that you can buy tickets. Uh, tickets right now are still, uh, uh, they are less expensive than kind of week of. So, and, you know, I would encourage you to grab early. The VIP uh, program is amazing. Um, Edrington is a, is a really big sponsor. They are, uh, uh, they're going to be doing, um, uh, the VIP people will actually get uh, an Edrington Gym Invitational shaker can, uh, which will be really, really cool. Uh, and they get some access to VIP only spirits as well as uh, VIP only seminars. So uh, would encourage you to do it. Um, but it's a, we actually, uh, we did something really cool. We actually lowered the price uh, from last year's experience overall uh, while expanding the offerings. Um, and so I, I think there's a tremendous amount of value in this uh, in this event. So That's awesome. Yeah. So I can't wait. I will see you there for sure. Um, and best of luck with the new role and everything in Mill Press. I think there's big things coming for you and I, I can't wait. Thank you, Jimmy. And I'm going to get you, I'm going to get you over there so that we can have some balsamics. Together. Yes. I all might right? drink it all, but I, I can't wait. We can do it. We can do it. <laughs> awesome. All right. Thanks so much, Jay, for coming Cheers. on. All right. Thank you. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Why Am I Talking podcast. If you enjoyed this and want to hear more content from amazing personalities in the Valley, please subscribe, leave a rating and drop us a quick review. 